Hey, in this video, I'm going to share how I constructed a uh, make.com automation script that extracts um, receipts and invoices that are sent to my inbox. And uh, you can use this actually to just take photos of receipts that you buy for your company, send them to your email, and it will automatically extract these. So um, let me get my face bit out of the way. It looks like this, but let's uh, take a look at Gmail first. I set this up with Gmail. So you can see here, I send an email just saying receipt or receipt, computer. And in here we see we have an image of a receipt where I bought a computer for my company. And up here, I just forwarded a um, an invoice from uh, Go High Level with two PDFs. So this is what we uh, got to work, and I have some other ones uh, earlier here. But let's see. We pull this into our database. I am using AI tables. You can use Air tables, AI tables. Google Sheets, doesn't really matter, um, as long as you have fields to put it into. And I've segmented it into product, so it tells me what product it is, the seller, the date, reference number is for myself, for my bookkeeping. Then I added in a, an account selector. So we it automatically selects which account um, the money was pulled from, I sometimes use my private account to buy business stuff um, and that needs to be uh, separated so I know where it goes. Then options here unchecked, that is a manual process for bookkeeping. Then adds the price, EX VAT, that's because I'm in Europe, so we have uh, VAT to, uh, it's a tax. And it adds the currency. And then I convert it into an approximate DKK, which is Danish crowns. I upload all the attachments here in this field. So you can see, pulls in the uh, PDF. I then add the email subject and which email it came from, just for good measurement. Let's go into make and see what we are doing. First thing is to pull your emails. And I've set this up with a Gmail node. Please note that you can set it up with, for example, a specific accounting email if you don't want to scrape everything. Um, and when you set this up, remember not to set the folder to all email and then you need to select, come on, you don't want to select this one. I just scanned my entire inbox from 2023 <laughs> on this setting. The problem with that is you will also get all spam, all send emails, like you will get everything. So please select inbox and save yourself a lot of operations. Um, and I just scan everything. Um, then we set the maximum results to 50. Okay, then you can right click and set choose where to start and then set a specific date. So if you're setting this up, the system, I'll uh, put a link to, uh, to the automation below. You can set it to start back in, for example, December 1st, 2022, and click OK. And then it will start from and pull in from uh, the whole year of 2023 and beyond. If you're like me and you haven't pulled out all your receipts yet, then uh, you might want to do this and save yourself the hassle. I am not going to do this. I'm going to set my starting date from today and then say 8.00 a.m. Let's just leave that there. We can see it run afterwards. Then we're going to um, look at the receipt, all the information. We're actually going to look at the email subject line, the sender name, the sender address, 
and if the attachments have any names. And we're going to categorize this, whether it is a uh, receipt or an invoice that we need to track or like put into our accounting system. So we got a prompt here, bookkeeper, you are tasked with categorizing. Yeah, yeah, you can read all that in the script. Please categorize the following email. Then we add in the email. Um, temperature set low. We specify that it should only output a zero or a one. So only output a zero if this email is not a receipt or a one if it is. What this does is we set up a filter. Yes, is receipt. So the answer, if that is equal to one, it goes this way. Then I added a label. So I will label all my emails with um, invoice bookkeeping. Then we have a set variable here. That is because we can read from the statements, for example, the last four digits of a credit card. So I know that the company information, my company card has these four digits. And if it has these four digits, then I used my private account. Big no, no, but I sometimes do that. Then we do an iterator on the attachments. So if we got any attachments, especially PDFs or images, whoops, this one should be is image. I'll get to that. So here we say is PDF. If the MIME type equals to application PDF, then it means that it is a PDF and we'll put it through Google Cloud Vision. In order to use Google Cloud Vision, you need to set up your Google Cloud account. You need to set up a, uh, can't remember, a space or something and then add in the Google Cloud Vision API and then add your API key in here in new connection in order to get access to it. There are probably videos on that. I won't go into this, but we will select the run uh, text detection OCR with a file and iterate the results. So if we got multiple, we'll just do it, but we'll, we, we iterate over here in this iterator instead. So you can do TIFF or PDF, and we are filtering by PDF. We then get the, we then aggregate the text. So if we have multiple PDFs, it will just add it in one long text file here. If this is not a PDF, it's if it's an image, it will skip this iterator and it will do it in this iterator. So if MIME type contains image because this can be PDF, uh, JPEG, not PDF, uh, PNG, sorry, and JPEG or the uh, Apple one, which I can't remember. So we just need to know that the MIME type contains image, then we'll put it through Google Cloud, run text detection OCR with an image. Again, we'll just aggregate the text. And now comes the fun part because this is a GPT-4 node that will aggregate or it will pull output all the information that we put into this into a um, array output. So we're saying, please use this template. We want to output product name, seller name, price x VAT, um, currency, date, and then a date format that is correct, and an account bank, or that, that's just an example. You only output the field, uh, the field template and nothing else. You never add a JSON wrapper. It does that sometimes, but we took care of that. And then I add all the, um, like if product name is not available, then use an A not available and currency. If account information is not available, just set it to empty. Then we go ahead and add the account information. So that is um, my company information, credit card that 
information goes there. Then we right take the information, put it into, we just restate that this is what we're gonna do. Then we add in email subject, sender name, address, email string, and we kept that at 2000 um, characters because if it really is a receipt, then we wanna like, shouldn't be more than 2000. Then we add the uh, PDF file here and cap that at 5000 characters. And again, add the image text and cap that at 5000 characters. There shouldn't be more text than 5000 characters in an image for a receipt. Max output token 1000, that's fine. Then we just parse this output here because this is not JSON yet, it's just a string output. So we parse the string output into a JSON format and we remove like this JSON wrapper because even though we said it should remove the JSON wrapper, it doesn't always do that. And here comes a part where you will probably use something else if you're going to set up this system. I'm using AI table, so we create a record and it puts it into this bookkeeping receipts, receipts for product, product name, seller, seller name. You can see that now we get this structured data from our JSON wrapper. Uh, product name, seller name, date, reference number, no account. Um, instead of having to choose here, we can then say map, just do a cancel so I don't override that. Come on. And thinking, come on, there we go. Won't do that again. Options um, unchecked because it's, um, we want everything that comes in to be unchecked or yeah, we haven't looked at it yet. Price, EXVAT, currency. Then we add the node, more or less the same as we put in to the, uh, through the AI email subject and from is that great then i need to get my ai table key in order to run these http nodes we're gonna do an iterator for all the attachments inside the email we're gonna upload a file um to my ai table we're going to create an array for each type file. So if we have multiple PDFs or multiple um, image files, it will just create an array uh, of this. And we're going to separate it by a comma, which means that it outputs this as a correct array. We're then going to um, add the files. So it's a two-step process for AI table. You need to upload the files and you need to add the files to the correct record. Um, so we'll do that. We'll get the key here. We we'll get the record from that create record over here. Then the fields attachments is going to be this text aggregator that we put in here. And the field is the attachment field. It's literally this one attachments, what we're referencing here. And that's it. Um, so this will uh, go ahead and pull in the receipts. I let's turn this. No, let's save. Let's do a run once. See what it does because we set it earlier to today in the morning. So now I'm gonna pull fifty emails in, and then let's see what we're gonna. We got an error. Why did we? get an error inbox simple email no let's just try again see if that was just a random error i hope not or i hope it is because it was <laughs> now i need to pause the video It might be that I just need to select the inbox from 
the root folder instead of having all inboxes. So I'm selecting folder and then inbox over here. I think it was set incorrectly. Then choose where to start just to be certain. So we'll do 0800AM. Let's see if we can get this to run now. And it's going to pull in. There we go. So it did something here. Let's just look. See what we got for output message. So that was the boost space. Let's just sort filter. Here we go. So that was these three and it found that it was a bank account because it read that. And let's just see here, four. Let's see what number four is. Message, no, output. That was my computer from 2023. Let's see up here. Yeah. So this one was this email here. You can see my beautiful image of this receipt got pulled in looking like this. And it caught that this was paid privately because down here in this field, you can actually see that the card equals to 2518, which is my private credit card. And then um, it noted like the price without VAT as well. Put that in here. So let's see, six, what did we get here? Choices, output, go high level. That was the two high level accounts or um, that was this one, I think. Yeah. So this one had two receipts or two. It had an invoice and another PDF. So here we got invoice and receipt. So we put that in here and here. And you can see that it picked up the 2383 and set that to bank. So I now scanned my entire inbox from 2023, including spam, because I didn't choose the correct folder in my um, in my Gmail uh, node here. So I will, uh, I will uh, say that please do that. And also when you select, I also put in the whole email, like down here, I added in the entire message. So like text content, here. So I scanned like all emails, all spam for the whole year of 2023. So I burned like many million tokens on this. Let's just say that. So don't do that. Um, don't put in the entire message, use this script instead. So I hope this was useful. Um, it certainly is for me because now I can have all my receipts and follow along with my bookkeeping because I'm also the accountant in my company at the moment. Um, and this saves me a lot of time digging through emails, finding the right receipts, um, just keeping track of everything. So um, hope it was useful and you can download the scripts in the description. Until the next video, bye.